Okay. So welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to be going over um, Lysol and bleach and some different kind of cleaners like that, that hopefully I can shed some light on uh, to help yourselves and your family. You may be using it currently and not aware of the possible dangers and side effects of it. And for you and your family, you know, that's your choice if you want to use it. But my job is to help make sure that you have the education you need to make an appropriate decision. Whatever you choose is all good, is no worries. Um, but, you know, making sure that you have the right information. Uh, I'm biblical based, and so one of my favorite verses is Hosea 4, 6, and it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I like to add, not for a lack of faith, not for a lack of love, and not for lack of prayer, but for a lack of knowledge. And of course, these times that we have, that we're all in right now, which is sort of interesting, it, um, it's for all of us. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or black or white or Michigan, California, whatever the case may be, all of us are basically stuck in the same boat, which is pretty much being confined to our um, homes unless you're an essential worker. And just giving a shout out for those folks, um, you know, for those of us who don't have to go to our normal jobs, um, you know, we get to have a little bit of break and clean our cabinets and our closets and play games and probably go a little stir crazy with the whole family together uh, if you're not used to that. But at the same time, those folks don't get a break. I don't know that they get additional pay and they're not gonna even get a break after this. So let's just keep them in our prayers and thoughts and well wishes as well. Um, so we're just waiting for a second for a few people to come on and then uh, we'll get started. Uh, I have a lot of links I'll be posting after this in uh, the, the body of the post. Um, you can't do it beforehand as a Facebook Live um, with links um, uh, to the EPA, to the CDC, to wherever, um, any handouts I have, and then also have a couple great audios um, from the EPA and uh, the FDA. So I talked to them uh, earlier uh, this last week and just got some great information as well. So, so to speak, you can hear it from the horse's mouth uh, of what um, is being said and what's appropriate and not appropriate is um, what the most important thing is. Um, so we'll just get started. My disclaimer is that I don't know everything, okay? Uh, I wish I did, but I don't. And so I'm giving you the best wholehearted information that I have that I use for my family and suggest to any of my family or friends. Um, with that, um, you know, there's, there's so much information out there that unless you really are intentional and due diligent with doing your research, you would just clearly not know. That happened to me 12 and a half years ago. Um, I was being taught about health and nutrition and chemicals. And I literally told um, the woman who was teaching the, and the lady who invited me that it was just rubbish. And I put no stake or bearing thinking that this information was correct until I got home from uh, camping. And then I learned uh, otherwise that what they were teaching is correct. So uh, it was very hard to uh, believe mostly because I felt really deceived and lied to. And I just, you know, do whatever you want to do, but I don't like being lied to, okay? Um, when you listen to the FDA or the EPA's recu uh, recording moving forward in the future, uh, they literally state that, you know, it's our job as consumers to read the um, precautionary statements or the hazards or the directions and it's for us to decide whether we want to purchase that product or not. The EPA also says that you should read the package and the directions and the hazards three times before you decide to use that product. Now, I have literally never heard that in my entire life uh, or even heard that we should read it in the first place. Although common sense would uh, suggest that we should. Part of my problem is not knowing, I assumed that because it was on the market, either the FDA or the EPA has already went through the precautionary statements to make sure it wasn't hazardous to humans or domestic animals that are pets in our household, and that it was safe to use. 
this is where I was gravely mistaken. And if you don't already know this information, you have been too. So this is where you have to now make a decision on the information and go do your own research and then decide what you want to do. Uh, part of the problem with some of these things that we're just not aware of is that they're there are ca cancer causing agents in these products. There's a reproductive harm. So that means um, your fetus can come out harmed. Um, and that happens frequently. We have a, a myriad of illnesses and diseases these days that should not be here. Um, and they weren't here as prevalent as they are today. Um, and so you're looking at a lot of different problems, especially respiratory, asthma, you know, uh, anything you definitely breathe in, sinus issues. I remember my husband back in the day uh, when I met him 30 years ago, he had uh, allergy and sinus issues, right? And of course, I didn't know anything about this kind of stuff back then. Um, he couldn't touch grass, he couldn't touch trees. You know, he used to miss, miss like six to eight weeks out of the year because of sinus and allergy problems. He was on medications, over the counter, not, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then miraculously, he was able to get off all of them because of what we changed in our household cleaners and products and what we consumed. Uh, sounds extremely far-fetched, but I promise you it's not. So anything is literally possible for anybody. So that's the exciting whole thing about this. There is hope in all of this, okay? Um, you have to decide uh, whether the risk or the hazards or the precautionary statements of these products I'm going to go over in just a second are worth uh, what you're up against, okay? Um, so you have to make that decision. Obviously, everyone's extremely concerned about the coronavirus, and I'm not comparing the coronavirus to the flu, so get that uh, clear right here. But in the U.S. in 2018, there were 61,000 people who died of the regular old flu, the influenza flu, okay? So what I'm going to talk about today and why we're in this pandemic right now, if we start practicing these things moving forward in the future, then prayerfully we can make it where no one just dies of the actual flu in general, right? I mean, that's awful just in general, okay? 61,000 people just in the U.S. died of the flu. So to me, generally speaking, that can be preventable by maybe half, I don't know, maybe more, who knows? Just by simple hand washing uh, and cleaning off what we're eating to make sure that there's not viruses or bacteria on foods as much as possible so that we can have a better chance of not contracting something from somebody, something else, the environment, our canned foods, our doorknobs, you know, going into grocery stores, going to church, going wherever, okay? So that's part of it. Um, I got a few notes here, so let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah. Yes, we, so we want to talk about safe products. And once again, I'll just say one more thing and then we'll move forward. Uh, per the American Cancer Society, uh, I was actually starting a cancer series uh, two weeks ago, but because of all this, I'm delaying it because obviously this is not uh, the current issue at hand that needs to be discussed. But I will be doing that in the future, so I'm excited about that. Um, I've had two uh, significant people in my life uh, pass away from cancer. Oh my goodness. And um, so it's important for me to uh, help make sure that the stats I'm going to give you in two seconds, um, I didn't expect this, I'm sorry. Um, don't happen to anyone else unnecessarily, okay? I do believe that everyone has a time and a date that the Lord's going to call us. Uh, at the same time, uh, we do have a part that we can help play in that, okay? So what I was trying to say is, per the American Cancer Society, uh, only 5 to 10% of all cancer is genetic. That means for all ages, races, and genders, okay? Only 5 to 10% is genetic. That means up to 95% is on lifestyle and environment. Lifestyle and environment means alcohol, tobacco, uh, sugars, a lack of sleep, stress. If you're breathing in bus fumes, you know, if you work in uh, a plant where you're building uh, cars and you're spray painting and you're not wearing a mask, you know, all those different kinds of things, okay? Uh, chemo and radiation by themselves cause cancer. You may not be aware of this, but they actually prescribe chemo 
for other things besides cancer, even rheumatoid arthritis, uh, for atopic pregnancies, for a lot of different things. And so people are getting chemo for things that when they don't even have cancer, but then they're very apt to get cancer, and especially on the age. If you have a child that's uh, 15 or below and they go to a regular hospital to get a CAT scan, that child is very likely to get cancer just from that one CAT scan. So these are all, inform all things that you can go research on your own. I have a lot of research on it. I, I can get you that information. I don't do mammograms. I do thermoscans. There's reasons why for that with the radiation as well. Um, you may not agree with everything I'm going to say, but at the same time, please go research this stuff and at least what I'm going to be talking about, about chemicals moving forward. So let me just skip there before I got people jumping off because they don't like what I'm saying. And Okay, so this week I talked to the EPA and the FDA. Just to be very clear, the FDA, if you ever want to call them, um, is responsible for anything that you put in your side, inside your body or outside. So they're responsible for foods, drugs, uh, makeups, uh, essential oils, um, and uh, hand sanitizer, lotions, potions, all that kind of stuff, okay? The EPA is responsible for anything that we'd use uh, on a surface, okay? Um, I had to put my glasses on. Let me actually make this a little bigger. So um, I actually was shocked because I didn't know that. Um, I should have, I feel like after all these years, but I, oh, they changed it in 1970, but still I was doing this after then. So I did not know about that. And so that was fascinating. Um, the EPA uh, state, they were developed in 1970. They state that um, we should read a product label three times before we decide to use it. Definitely read it before you purchase it. Um, we shouldn't have to worry about uh, doing anything with our foods. Uh, so simple soap and water, they said, will take care of any foodborne um, viruses on it because it doesn't stick on food. This is what the EPA is saying. I don't necessarily agree with all this. I'm just telling you what they said, okay? Uh, they said that the, if there was a virus on uh, the food, that your stomach acid, which is a pH of 2.5, will kill that. And so you don't have to worry about if there's a virus on your food and then you ate it, okay? I, once again, I don't, I don't agree with that, but whatever. Um, they said simple hand washing uh, can take care of most of the issues. And just to be real clear, real quick, I'm only talking about household use of Lysol and these things, okay? I'm not talking about medical facilities, hospitals, nursing homes. That's a whole different ball game uh, because they're held by different standards. If you're having surgery, you've got to make sure uh, areas are sterile, all that kind of stuff. So just so you know, I'm talking about in-home personal use, okay? Um, when it comes to, um, yeah, so it's sort of shocked to hear her say that it would, you don't have to worry about viruses, just using soap. The part of the problem with this is if you haven't seen it already for yourself, I know some people on here have, because they've told me, um, that people are literally spraying their apple, their child's apple with Lysol and then giving it to them to eat, okay? Um, if you're spraying the orange and then peeling it, I could understand more, but still it's not okay. Um, and people are spraying down themselves and uh, like doing a mist and then walking into it and spraying their children, okay? And so Lysol is actually registered as a pesticide, which I have all the information for you in just a second. And I'll be posting these links once again. So it's actually a pesticide. It says hazardous to humans and domestic animals. And it's really pretty crazy because you're coming into realizing that they're called quats uh, and that's all the ammonium uh, compounds that they have in them. It triggers asthma, allergies, um, <coughs> uh, any kind of respiratory concerns. Um, it'd be detrimental to uh, seniors uh, or people who have a COPD, um, asthma, you know, uh, what else? Emphysema, whatever, I don't know. Um, I remember I used to work with my uh, grandma's nursing home back in the day. And this young, this lady, she wasn't young, but she was like in her uh, late 70s. She sprayed Lysol all day, 
I've been teaching on Lysol and hazards for 12 and a half years, if you're new with this, okay? So just so you know. So everyone, no one believed me back in the day, for sure. Now you may, but back in the day, no one did. So I asked this young lady to, I gave her $10. I said, you don't have to throw away your Lysol. I just don't want you to use it for one month and use this instead. And let's just see what happens. And do you know that just from not using her Lysol, she was able to not use her steroid inhaler, except for maybe once a day, when she used it prior three to five times a day. And then towards the end of the month, she didn't even use it on a regular basis. But when you get to see what's in Lysol in a second, you're going to be like, holy Toledo, that Lysol was creating so much inflammation in her respiratory, uh, in her lungs, she didn't have any choice but to use that. So just taking away one product help her with her respiratory, okay? Um, if you go research quats, it's Q-U-A-T-S. You will understand about the disinfectants and the chemicals and how they trigger these different kinds of things. Once again, I'll have a link for you. Um, we shouldn't be using these things how we do. When you look at the videos and the commercials for Lysol or for Breeze or something like that, you'll see a bed and 30 acres of, fl of flowers. Like no one's bedroom is like that, okay? Obviously. Uh, you'll see a picture where if you don't look at the people talking and the dog and the, and the microwave and they just cooked fish and so it stinks and that's why they're using Lysol, you'll see in the background there's a curtain that's flying uh, vertical, or excuse me, horizontal, uh, because there's a hurricane going on. So that's showing as well ventilated. Sometimes you'll see a commercial where there's a, a couch and it looks like there's um, uh, curtains hanging, but there's no ceiling and no walls. It's really, they put a couch on a beach with curtains around it, uh, a couch on the beach with curtains around it. And so it looks cute. It looks like you're overlooking a lake, but really, if you look at the big picture, there is no walls or ceiling. So there, there's laws for truth in advertisement, but they're being truthful. It's showing it has to be well ventilated because there's no roof, there's no walls. So the best place for you to use your Lysol is outside your house, but no one does this, right? This is the whole point of this conversation. So that's part of the problem. So let me just go share my screen for a second and hold on, I gotta close some of this stuff down. People are messaging. Okay, share my screen. Here. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is a list from the EPA. I'll, I'll post this link for you about disinfectants and use for SARS coronavirus. And, and just so you know, if you didn't know already, the, the coronavirus, not COVID-19, uh, that's a family of viruses has been mutating. However, that's a whole nother topic how, what I believe on this, but I'm not going to go into that today. So that really comes from SARS, which comes from, uh, I always want to say Mars, but it's not, it's MERS. Um, so there's a huge history. There's many strands of the coronavirus, okay? Um, COVID-19 is a new strand, okay? So, uh, and when you look at the back of a Lysol container today, it will show you it works with human coronavirus, but that's not what uh, this is today, okay, and the, and the EPA is not saying it works on the new one, but they have to give people something to try to use, right, because everyone's in an uproar. So when you go here to this pesticide registration and the list of disinfectants, you're going to go down here. They're nice enough not to put their names on here. You actually have to go, this is the registered number for these, okay, and you have to go here and go find if the registered number to figure out if it's Lysol or bleach or whatever. They make it very difficult nonetheless. But real quick, I'm gonna show you because one of the things I'm just gonna show you right now uh, that products have that the EPA even recommends is hydrogen peroxide. Don't you think that hydrogen peroxide is a thousand better choice than using Lysol or bleach? And it's even on their list. Just so you know, they say anywhere, um, between a one to 5% hydrogen peroxide. The stuff that you buy at the store in the brown bottle is 3%. Of course, there's food grade hydrogen peroxide. That's great. Uh, there's 
many different things about taking that internally. Um, and so that would be even a better choice. I just wanted to show you this. There's over 15 pages here that you can see down here that go over that and you'll see that more often. Uh, this th uh, thermal, I'm saying it wrong. This has to do with uh, time, which is sort of interesting. I can't, just, I can't talk on that. Let's go to the next screen. So when you go click on these things, it will lead you to another page. It goes to the World Health Organization, which we've all been hearing about them lately. It talks about the, uh, the group of um, carcinogens. There's group one, which is a carcinogenic, which means cancerous to humans. Group two uh, is about probable and possible, and then not classified, right? So they're saying that there's cleaners out here that there's 120 of them that have cancerous agents in them. There's 83 that are probable and then 314 that are possible. But once again, if you were buying your container right here, let me just unshare this for one second because I think it's worth doing. If you're right here buying this Lysol, this was mine from back in the day, okay? So believe me, I used to use all this stuff. Bleach was like my favorite thing. If on the front they said hazardous to humans on here or may cause cancer, would you buy it? Causes respiratory distress, just causes asthma, causes whatever. Would you purchase it? That's the question you have to answer yourself. If the answer is no, then you need to be mad about how these products are allowed on the market and help do something about it. That's what I do, okay? If you're okay with it, then go ahead and use it. Uh, listen to the end so maybe you'll hear something else that's valuable to you. But they put it back here and literally the smallest font in the universe where unfortunately at my age of almost 51, I can't read this. I have to wear my reader glasses. And this is a container from you know, 15 years ago, just so you know, the new ones are even more interesting, but they still very small. It says precautionary statements, hazards to humans and domestic animals. You're not supposed to spray this on your skin or your clothing. If you do, you wash it off immediately. I'm almost tempted to do this, but I don't want to, but you know what the aerosol looks like when you spray this stuff, right? So when you're spraying it, is it getting on your skin? Yes or no? Is it getting on your person, uh, your clothing, your couch, your animals? Is that getting on the floor and now your dogs are gonna be you know, stepping in it, right? And walking with their little feet and their pads on their feet. Are they gonna be licking their feet? You know, All these different kinds of things. So this is where we want to really look at this. Um, let me go find this video real quick. I don't know, I, don't, I try to have it all lined up. I don't know if I do. Oh goodness, it was Lysol. Um, well, we'll find it in a second. It's in order somewhere. Okay, so now we go to the EPA, uh, the United States Environmental Working Group, okay? This is the agency that, can, that goes over all agriculture and pesticides and anything we use on surfaces in our house, hospitals, whatever. And so right here goes through the list of this was the click from going from right here and you click on these ingredients. This is also the e EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group. They classify Lysol as a big fat F for failing. Uh, it's F for health safety, okay? A would be a good a letter, okay? It's A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? It gets an F for health uh, safety, okay? So it talks about all the different stuff that's in here. When you click on here, it brings you back to the EPA and it says, this is what ethanol uh, or ethyl chloride does. And this is what this does. And it causes musculoskeletal problems or um, uh, can't gain weight or causes liver problems or uh, fetal rectal skeletal uh, death in mice and skeletal variations in rats. You know, whether it's human, or whether it's animal-based studies, it will give you that information, okay? So they make it very difficult, I'm telling you, I had to call Lysol to figure out how I even get to where you find their ingredients because they make it difficult so you cannot find it, so you don't find it, so you don't question it, okay? Um, 
so once again, Lysol here gets a big old F and there's many different things in here. They did get an A for water and alcohol that have been approved, so that's exciting. But all these other things are really pretty concerning and scary. Um, now, when we go forward, here's the list from the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, which is our governmental agency. Um, and it says, um, where is it at right here? Lysol brand, all-purpose cleaner. Hmm, hold on a second. Marketing label. Oh, here it is. Application for pesticide. Dear God, like this is outrageous to me. Like comment in, if you're on Facebook, comment please. Uh, did you have, I mean, you may not thought Lysol was the best choice, but you don't want to use, but did you know it was registered as a pesticide? Did you know that? Do you think it should be on the front of the label if, as such. I'll be posting this link. Okay, please put that below. Um, when you come to, this is the smart label for uh, Lysol itself. Okay, this is their Lysol.com. It brings you to a whole nother website. It's called RB and it brings you to the smart label. So now whenever you see DL, DL means that that is hazardous material. That's a hazardous material symbol. Um, and you can go here for butane, uh, ethanol, melmaline, whatever it is, right? And you click on here, then it brings you to another list. I mean, it just, it's nonstop, okay? And then it brings you, click here for another list, and it go tells you what the hazards are, but it, it's like five clicks away, okay? There's a reason why they do this. They're hoping you're going to give up, okay? that has the healthy and safety information, hazardous to humans and domestic animals, may cause uh, irritation if you get in the eyes, of course we would know that, on the skin or on the clothing. So even if you get it on the clothing, it can cause irritation. Wash with soap and water uh, thoroughly before eating or drinking, chewing gum, using tobacco, or using the restroom. Okay, so that's, it's telling you right there what's going on. Um, usage and handling, it shows you. It was sort of interesting here on this whole section, it didn't say anything about not using, uh, it didn't have more information about not using on your person. And of course it talks about um, this information. It gives you, if you go to their website, which we will in a second, it's like all beautiful. Uh, we'll just skip here real quick to Clorox uh, bleach. That got a big old fat F. This is one of the biggest things in my opinion for uh, destroying the thyroid. Um, and other organs, believe me, I used to love the smell of bleach. I would sniff it. <laughs> you know, you think you have to have it to have something be clean. And if you're at that stage, there's hope for you because I was that way too. Uh, but once again, this is a very hazardous substance. And please know that if you, this is everywhere. If you ever mix Clorox and ammonia, you will have a lethal combination and you can literally just die from that like very quickly. Okay. Uh, that's known everywhere, hopefully. Lysol right here, this is another Lysol bleach. So I stay with the Lysol brand. It's not just Lysol, just so you know, I'm just banging on them for right now. But right now, once you go, if you go back to the, um, the Lysol website, um, and then it brings you here, it has you click on the ingredients. All these DLs mean there's a problem. It tells you how and why. It gives you the MSDS on it, which is the material safety data sheets. Um, and it tells you what's going on. So this is why you want to research this. Here's this again. Uh, this is the smart label they bring you to, to another part of the website. And it goes over these things again, talking about how they're hazardous and how and why, um, and why you'd not want to use them. And it gives you the two links to move forward, okay? Uh, this is part of their website as well that they take you out of. And they give you the um, DL list uh, once again, they go over Prop 65, which is known to cause uh, uh, endocrine disruptors. Uh, endocrine disruptors, you know, females have 12 um, systems for your, your, for your whole body is based on hormones. Your whole body, even vitamin D is a hormone. Even your heart needs hormones. Like, it's like, it's baffling, okay? And all of these things, whether you're whether you're pregnant, whether the baby's one, 
like I always love Johnson & Johnson, the pink bottle, you know, you th that's just what you think babies need to be smell, you know, how they need to smell. That is the worst stuff in the universe, okay? And our babies don't even need lotion. We don't need lotion. I don't even promote lotion, okay? If you wanna use a lotion, I can tell you a great one to get through Young Living or just use coconut oil, right? But if you need lotion, that means your skin is, that means that you don't have enough water inside your body and you don't have enough good fats. Your dryness does not come from the external, it comes from the internal out, unless you've been stranded for 30 days in a boat in the ocean or in the desert somewhere and your car broke down. Okay, yeah, that would happen, okay? But otherwise, anything that you get on your skin, unless it's a chemical burn, poison oak, or poison ivy, has to do with internal issues. Okay, it's not an external thing if you have dry skin or cracked feet. That has to do with what you don't have inside coming out, generally speaking, besides those guidelines. So when you're looking at um, all these chemicals that are, this is on their site saying that this is in our products, maybe not all of them one, but still, and it tells you what's wrong with them. So when you're talking about huge endocrine disruptors that create synthetic estrogen in your body, Male, female, infant, none of us need more estrogens. Okay, that's the like number one reasons for thinning skin and cancers and, and female and male. And so, you know, this is why we're talking about this. Um, oh, let me go past here. Uh, hold on, I gotta find the other link here. Okay, uh, let me see if I can expand this because this is just fun. So this is Lysol, this is, this is only a minute, so I'm just going to go over this. Tell Mary to use Lysol disinfectant spray to kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. For great protection from germs, be sure to disinfect frequently touched areas, such as light switches, door handles, kitchen counters, fridge and microwave handles, remotes, and more. Hold the can upright 6 to 8 inches from the surface and spray for 3 to 4 seconds until covered. Let surface remain wet for three minutes to disinfect. Apply to items that can bring germs into your home, such as shoes, backpacks, coats and packages. So just real quick, we'll keep going, but are you not gonna be touching your coat with that pesticide or your shoes when you put them on? Or is that not falling to the ground for your dogs, your young children to, to touch? Also use on soft surfaces, such as couches, pillows, and mattresses. The fabric must remain wet for 10 minutes, then allow to air dry. Protect you and your family from viruses and bacteria daily with Lysol disinfectant spray. Lysol, what it takes to protect. I like to say what it takes to kill, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, Uh, a lot of people, and I've seen things with this, is people spray their kids' toys, um, and then our babies, our infants go suck on these toys. They're getting straight cancer-causing chemicals. They're getting uh, estrogens. And like, how is it even possible that infants and babies are dying of cancer and have all these problems growing up, right? We have to really look at what's going on and try to really think about how we can help ourselves and not spray our person, not spray our foods. If you're gonna use Lysol per their own stuff, make sure it's well ventilated. Should you use it in the bathroom after you just went poop? No, you're not supposed to. That's not how it's intended to use. They advertise it that way, they make you assume you can use it that way, but you can't. So if you're going to use these products, please use them safely and responsibly, like the EPA lady told me this week, so that you can live happy, you can live longer and healthier, right? So this is part of what we wanna do. So I will be posting the EPA and the FDA, so they're about uh, five and eight minutes long, I believe. And if you can listen to that whole thing, it would be who of you, because you can really hear what, needs to be said, and you need to read this whole label. It's ridiculous, it's that small of a print. And just so you know, they are not claiming that Lysol kills COVID-19. Uh, they said that clearly on the phone and it's on their website that it does not kill 
they said it has had benefit for human coronavirus, but it has not been tested for the COVID-19, just so you know. So let me see what I've missed real quick, please. Um, let's see here. I'm going to ask that if uh, Cindy or Julie is on this call and available and on Zoom, yep. if you can, if there's any comments or questions that people have in a second, if you can uh, let me know if I don't answer in the next part, because I'm not gonna be able to go read them at the same time. I, I can't do that. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, so what's it, real quick, just to give you a little bit with COVID-19, uh, what they're saying is that it stays in the air for three minutes. Okay, or excuse me, three hours. It can stay suspended in the air. On cardboard, it's for an hour. On hard surfaces like metal and plastic is up to three days. Okay, that's just a report I just got. Um, obviously, all of us need to do what we can do, and we most of us are right now reducing the spread of this, right? So that's why we're staying at home. Um, obviously, people are dying from this and getting sick. Um, when, you, uh, when we all apply social distancing, that's great. If you have to go to the store or the gas station or this or that, wherever you have to go, uh, we should be wearing a mask or get at least a bandana or uh, the other day I had a kid's t-shirt on and it was like, you know, like a small one, right? So this one wouldn't stay up over my nose and whatever. There's better choices, uh, not that it's a N92, whatever it is mask, but it will be a better choice. Okay, if, if it's you or me, going on a walk or walking our dog in a public area or going to the grocery store, okay? Um, because obviously people are getting this, so anyone can get it, right? We'll talk about boosting the immune system in a second. I love the CDC's video on washing hands. And to be honest with you, I can't say I was probably the best hand washer in the past. Although the products that I do personally use uh, apparently have protected me over all these years. But when you're washing your hands, you gotta pretend like you have glitter or paint, or if you work in the shop and you got grease all over your hands, right? So if, like we really don't realize how much we probably don't wash our hands. If you had paint on your thumb, usually we go like this and like this and whatever, but we don't get our thumbs, we don't really get the top. And so they want you to do 20 minutes with washing your hands, going like this, getting the top, going like this, getting your thumbs and doing the whole hand for a straight 20 seconds with a soap, okay? Um, the soap that I use in uh, our household for 20 minutes is uh, the Thieves uh, soap. We've been using this literally uh, since it came out. I don't even know when it is, whether it's 10 years or 12 years ago, but uh, it's been a lot of years. And they have a new lemon one, so I'm like, so excited. I already ordered it. But this is what we've used in our household for many years. It's the only soap that I have for hand washing in my household. Okay. And it's worked for us and all the people that I have come over and we have dogs. I always wash my couches off because we have like leather uh, couches, um, you know, and dogs, you know, they walk in their own stuff. They, you know, all this kind of stuff. So they lick stuff all day long. That sort of grosses me out personally. So my couches are always being washed with the thieves cleaner personally. Uh, let me keep going with how to reduce things. Um, when you get your products, you can, if you're buying, if you just went to the grocery store and you're coming home and you want to make a better choice, you know, have half of your counter or your table, uh, you can clean the whole thing, right? But then put your groceries on one side, take out the stuff and put it on the other side when, it, when you've cleaned it off. Or if you have a box of cereal, you can take out the bag and put it over here because no one's touched the bag in how long because it's not going to stay on that kind of surface, right? They didn't just put in the bag and ship it to the store and you got it yesterday and then now it's here, okay? <clears throat> there's a time process gap between that. Um, you know, if you're getting, if you have to get prescriptions or whatever you're getting, you can literally uh, uh, take it out of the bag, wipe it down, and then put it on the clean side so you're not contaminating both sides. One thing with Young Living's practices, uh, I'll have to post a picture of this, Young Living's workers uh, are, they, Young Living's had over 700% volume product increase in the last couple of weeks, rightfully so, right? They had a high, hired 200 more workers, uh, but there's plastic hanging from the ceiling in between six feet of each worker, and each worker has gloves, a mask, and the whole body garb thing on. So our products that we're getting in are not even being handled by people uh, as of recent. So that's interesting and exciting. 
Um, obviously, all the stores cannot do that and may didn't even have that information in the beginning. Um, the CDs, or excuse me, the EPA talks about cleaning with alcohol, cleaning with peroxide. Um, there's steam cleaning, there's ultraviolet cleaning. Not that they've approved the last two of those for anything, but just so you know, we know that when you steam something, it kills like everything, okay? That's like the dishwasher. So uh, if you have a steam cleaner, that's a great way to steam clean some things. Um, and once again, using Lysol and such products, uh, the, the CDC says and the e, uh, EPA says that you can use any standard disinfectant. But any standard disinfectant that's been on the market, Lysol had to come to the EPA and say, hey, I want to register this. Here's my uh, ingredient and warning label. Can you approve me? And they say, yeah, let's approve you. And then it gets on the market. That's just how simple it is. So th there's, uh, it's already registered as a pesticide. We already know we're not supposed to spray and eat it, right? Supposedly, even though it's not really totally clear and uh, evident uh, with the size and where it's placed on the label. But still, they say we should know that. So it's automatically approved, you guys. And so it's not like the EPA went and tested everything and said, hey, this has pesticides in it. They already know it does. They approved it. It's, a, it's, it's registered as a pesticide. Okay, so that's why we don't want to do that. Um, so let me show you what uh, I use. I know this image is probably going to be a little blurry, but um, it is what it is. I don't want to misspeak um, a claim. Uh, you have to understand that when you work in the natural health business, we are governed by, um, we don't have free speech, we have commercial speech. So commercial speech means that I, can, uh, I can't tell you everything I think or feel or what I do and the reasons how and why, uh, because I'm involved in this product uh, that I believe in heavily. So here's these products. I'll post this so you can read it for yourself. I use Thieves Oil all the time. This is the Vitality. I literally open up my uh, water bottle and I will drop, you probably can't see it. I'll drop 20 drops in here, I don't even care. And it's Vitality. You can gargle it. I don't have time to gargle it in front of you, sorry. You can swallow it, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So I drink this on a regular basis. Um, this is something our family and I have done for years. Okay, and there's the other one, which I don't have right here. Uh, Thieves, I use on my hands. Um, I can use my body. I definitely rub on my feet every night. We put along our spine. Um, and this is something uh, you can use for your counters. Um, if you are removing dirt or grime from surfaces, we, that's what we're allowed to say, okay? Thieves Cleaner, oh my goodness. I've been using this literally for 12 years. I've drinking this whole thing right here, nothing happened to me. I use this for my floor, for my walls, for my windows, for my wood, um, for my toilets, my sink. Uh, in my tubs and inside my sink, I also use baking soda because that's like really good for grime, you know, or, you know, I, you know, that kind of stuff. But this I use for everything else. I'm allowed to tell you that I use it for general cleaning uh, and it helps to remove dirt and grime. That's all I can tell you. But I have used this only in my house for 12 and a half years, okay? Uh, it's safe for uh, children, for pets, all that kind of stuff. Um, my, we talked about this earlier, my Thieves hand soap, okay? There's a refillable one. Uh, per the Center for Disease Control, uh, they want you to wash your hands for 20 seconds all over. We just showed how. You can go look at great videos. Just imagine you had paint on your hand or even do this with your kids, like, um, you know, get some chocolate syrup or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe no, that's bad for you. Put paint on your hands. I don't know. And have the kids let it dry and then let them see how long it takes to like actually wash their hands in all the areas. Because most kids just go like this, you know, whatever. Um, I will give a praise for, I've seen her myself, um, Olive uh, Pike. That girl showed me how to wash hands and she did it for longer than 20 seconds. I was like highly impressed. So kudos to mama there and dad for teaching how to wash uh, hands to a, a two-year-old. But um, uh, what was I going to say with that? 
then, you know, like, remember that thing we used to do when you, we would brush our teeth and you take that little pink tablet so you can see where you really didn't get, it's like the same kind of concept for all of us just to really see, like, are we really washing our hands um, as directed and well enough to maintain uh, health and safety in us and others? Uh, these spray, oh my gosh, I use this all the time. This is like something I use on a regular basis. If I'm in the grocery store, I will spray my hand before I touch the, um, the handle. Um, I'll go like this and spray and walk into this. Uh, on an airplane, I'll spray the little uh, tray or you know whatever it is. I, I have this in my purse at all times and I use it on a regular basis. Um, we're allowed to say that these, this, these spray here contains 70% alcohol concentration recommended by the CDC for disinfecting surfaces. So you can use this, okay? That's exciting. Um, the Thieves hand sanitizer right here. We're allowed to say um, that this right here uh, kills 99.99% of the germs. I know a lot of my nurse friends use this. They love it. You, who uses this? And comment below in the Facebook post, please. Uh, especially if you're in the profession where you have to use this on a regular basis. Does this dry out your hands? Yes or no? Okay. Um, how do you like it? How do you feel it compares? But just so you know, per the FDA, we're allowed to say it kills 99.99% of the germs. So this is something that you can feel safe and comfort using as well uh, on, your, on your, uh, your family, your children. And it's a better choice than using regular, uh, this is a different kind of um, combination of alcohol than the regular ethyl, ethyl alcohol. Uh, and back in the day, you know, and I'm nobody, I'm, I'm special, but I'm nobody special, okay? Anyone can do this. Uh, back in the day when my kids went to school here in the Genesee County, um, we got, to, I got hand sanitizer taken out of the school system that my kids went to um, for a couple of years. I went to the school board, I did this, had all these reports from U of M, from um, fire departments and all this kind of stuff when hand sanitizer was first co coming out. They said it was supposed to help protect us and make us safer, but you know what? It hasn't decreased the amount of staff or MRSA in the hospitals and they use it all day long. So does it or does it not? But what I can tell you that it does is everyone is a different body weight. Uh, most of you, if you saw my post before, you know I'm a 200 pounder. So me using hand sanitizer and like you, you have to be careful when you do this, like you don't even need a whole squirt here, okay? Like I don't know why I'm gonna do this now, but you don't even need a whole squirt, okay? And so when you use this, um, and I put a whole squirt on my kid or the hand sanitizer, like I literally donated every year two gallons of that big old thing I get from Sam's Club to my kids class. And when you squeeze down that pump, you can lube up your whole body, right? It says to only use a pea size amount, which is literally not very much, right? We all know what a pea looks like. But when we squeeze this down, we get enough to lube up everything. So if I squeeze it down and use it for 200 pounds, right? Versus um, a 50 pound kid or a 30 pound kid or an infant, you're talking about their blood alcohol levels increasing. We, I don't care what people say, you have to apply common sense to this. This is alcohol. We're talking, let me read this fact for you so I don't misquote it here. Uh, at 62% ethyl alcohol, uh, or roughly 120 proof, the sanitizer is about uh, uh, alcoholic as some is as strong as some rums and whiskeys. Okay, whatever you put on your skin absorbs into your bloodstream from three seconds to 20 minutes. Anything you put, good or bad, it's gonna absorb into your bloodstream. Okay, it's, it's very simple. If you don't understand that concept, I just want you to think about a birth control patch, a smoker's patch, a, a chemo patch, an insulin patch, okay, a pain patch. All that is is a big band-aid that you put on your skin and that medication absorbs into your bloodstream, even time release for a month, like a birth control patch, a smoker's, yeah, said smoker's patch. This is fascinating. You've got to really think about this. If you're using lotion and potions that have BHA, the parabens, um, propylene glycol, 
all the different names for formaldehyde. I'll put a link to my chemical cheat sheet uh, on this post as well. This, there's gonna be a lot of posts on this website or on this link. Um, if you, you, the formaldehyde, formaldehyde has five different names for it, but it doesn't say formaldehyde, okay? Now, if you're in beauty school, they'll tell you, well, that's a different formaldehyde. No, it's not. It does not say formaldehyde A and formaldehyde B, okay? There's formaldehyde and there's five different names for it. Those names, uh, we don't need to be embalming ourselves prior to death. That's supposed to be for after death, okay? So we want to, and that's only so we can have a funeral. So we want to be aware of this. There's studies that I'll be posting below um, as well, because I don't want to go too long here, um, with all the alcohol. 11 volunteers had not consumed alcoholic beverages uh, in five days. Uh, they applied a, a popular brand of hand sanitizer, uh, it was Perel, to their hands. According to the manufacturer, 62% Perel consists of alcohol, ethyl alcohol. By the day's end, the urine of the eight uh, subjects contained levels of alcohol breakdown product that was indicated in the subject's uh, urine. By that you, if you were consuming alcohol, but they weren't, they were using hand sanitizer, okay? So this is once again, you know, um, when my kids, you know, they're, they're 20 and 24 now, right? But back in the day when they were little, you know, they, schools and teachers taught um, safety, right? Which they should be. Uh, our school didn't have a sink, like they had a sink, but it didn't work. So they couldn't even use soap and water because there wasn't. That's why everyone donated the hand sanitizer. But you know they're trying to teach the kids about um, self safety and all this stuff. So they would use it before snack and after snack and before or after recess, before lunch. So these kids are getting so much of this ethyl alcohol. And once again, they're not using a pea size amount. The teacher does not have time to go through and go room room, room, room to all these 28 kids in their class. They're passing it around, they're getting a little squeeze, they're definitely getting, or a pump, and they're definitely getting more than what they should be getting, okay? Um, so once again, those are the kind of things. Let me make sure I didn't forget anything else, and then we'll see if there's any questions that I can help answer. Um, You know, if you're watching this and someone shared it with you and you're interested in uh, learning more about safer cleaning products, um, then by all means, please contact whoever sent you this message so that you can, uh, so they can help you, okay? Okay, uh, Cindy or anyone else, was there any questions? You'll have to unmute yourself. Okay. Oh, uh, Stacy, okay. Stace, there wasn't. Okay, good. Okay, so um, I guess we will, um, goodness, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I hate that. Whatever it is, I'll be posting a whole bunch of information. The main thing is uh, just praying for everyone's health and safety. Uh, try to make the best choice possible uh, for what you have available. Just merely washing your hands on a regular basis uh, will do more good for you than anything else and so making sure you know how to do that properly. Um, wear a mask when we're out right now. Um, obviously keep all our uh, essential workers in uh, prayer that they can uh, maintain good health um, and not have anything uh, happen to them in a negative way. And just really be thinking about um, what you're doing for yourself. My gosh, I don't even have it right here. Sorry, let me get it just one second. If you don't know already, uh, my name is Stacy Kimbrell and I wrote a book on health and nutrition and chemical awareness. Uh, this book was written 12 years ago, uh, published 12 years ago. Um, and I've been teaching on chemical awareness for the last 12 plus years, okay? Uh, this information that's out here was back then and it's still prevalent today, unfortunately. If we keep using pesticide 
cleaners, they're going to keep making them and giving us more to use, okay? Um, and just because it says Clorox green, it does not mean it's green cleaning, okay? It's Clorox. So um, just realizing the big picture in all this, you know, like a lot of people, I used to love Burt's Bees, but, you know, Clorox bought Burt's Bees for $8 million probably like seven years ago. Do you think Burt's Bees is still a wholesome recipe? Mm, I don't think so. So this is where we just really have to do due diligence, really be intentional to see what we can do for ourselves, our family, our pets, um, our loved ones. And if you have any thoughts or questions, please put them below and we can help get that information. Uh, someone just asked, uh, you can go to my website, which is livinganointed.com. And, or you can go to Amazon and just look up Living Balanced Stacy Kimbrell. I have some YouTube videos out there. If you type in YouTube and Stacy Kimbrell, you may find some stuff that you're looking for. Um, I do have a great website coming up with all the cancer research and radiation and all these different kinds of things. So I'm excited about getting that out there so that you can have access to that for and, and vaccinations and all of this isn't the time or place for this, uh, that, those kind of talks. Um, although um, I'm sure if you research my page, you'll find more of that kind of information. And um, that's it. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you guys all so much and uh, blessings to all of you. And uh, if I know you personally and you're not working with anyone and you're interested in a young living, then please let me know and I'd love to help you. Okay. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thanks, Stace. Thank you. I have to figure out how to stop sharing. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, you guys that are on Zoom, does anyone have any questions? You can unmute yourself. Nope, thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's see if that stopped. Hey, Cindy? Yep. Okay, did it go okay? Yeah, it went great. Okay. I'll just make it sure it stopped on Facebook. Let me check. Uh, yep, it did. Okay, good. Still on Zoom. You know, just yep. yesterday. Still on Zoom, but she knows. Yeah, it's okay. Um, just yesterday, um, let me stop this. Stop.